So here's the deal. I'm a lifetime natural drug-free bodybuilder and I train my arms in a very unconventional way with something called naturally intense high intensity training. And my biceps look like this, training only once a week for maybe about four to maybe five, six minutes max. And very importantly, I didn't start off with great arms or great genetics overall to begin with. So when I started training, my arms measured about 11 and a half to 12 inches. Oh, and I weighed 125 pounds. And I was going to bring them up over the course of several decades to about 18 inches fully pumped. Now that's significant because a lot of the information out there about how to train your biceps in particular comes from those who either number one are using steroids. And one of the things about using drugs is that your muscles are going to grow sometimes, even if you don't work out at all or for people who naturally had big arms to begin with, or those people whose arms really respond when they start training, which was not the case with me at all. You see, the key to successful training regimen is always to find those who start off not necessarily being the biggest or the most genetically gifted, but those who are to build impressive muscles over a period of time naturally, very importantly, naturally. And as a lifetime natural athlete, I'm going to share with you exactly some of the very unconventional things I did to build my arms. And I'm sure it's going to pique your interest. So stay tuned. Let's talk a little more about this. So in this video, we're talking about bicep training for natural bodybuilders. What's the best way to really grow those arms? And before I go any further, like thank everyone for the continued support, especially those who should be a one-stop place for anyone who's training naturally without drugs or supplements. Thanks again for the support and do be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell as well so you're first time to get the new content as it comes out. So on to our topic, biceps training. And these tips are applicable for the average person, not just those who naturally have fantastic looking arms. But if you do have fantastic legging and arms, I'm pretty sure that some of the things I'm going to tell you are going to give you some insight that's going to help you make them even bigger and even more impressive. The first tip is high intensity and low volume. Now, the first mistake I made is I was working my arms twice a week. And I did see some modest growth, but I never got to a point where I felt like I was making enough progress that I was eventually going to get to my goals. And everyone kept on saying that you have weak arms, your arms aren't naturally big. And they weren't. My arms kind of look like noodles to begin with. And it was always this prevailing idea if you have a weak body part, you should hit it more than once a week and try to hit it even sometimes even three times a week, which I later found out to be a huge mistake. When I started training my arms with high intensity training, I was training them so hard that I could only do one exercise. Three sets, one exercise, that was it. There was no way my biceps were able to do anything else because the intensity was absolutely scorching. And the very idea of doing more sets or more exercises was ridiculous because my arms literally could barely move after I was finished training. <laughs> And with that type of intensity, I was training my arms only once a week. And you know what? They grew. For the past 33 years, in the period of my most gains, I've always trained my arms only once a week, which doesn't sound like much. But over the years, I've proven it, not just with myself, but all the people who have trained as the most effective way for the average man or woman to increase their arm size and really realize their potential. But not just the fact that my arms grew, my arms kept on growing because I kept on also varying the exercises. Which is tip number two, you have to vary the exercises. Muscles will respond to overload, yes, but they're also responding as an adaptation to something it's not accustomed to, unaccustomed stimulus. And so by constantly varying your exercises while keeping the intensity very much on the high side, you make it such you don't have plateaus. And plateaus are what you have to always be wary of. It's very easy to get into a groove, to get into a way of training where you feel comfortable, like you have this, you know how many reps you're going to do, you know which weights you're going to do. 
that's not a good thing because if your body is accustomed to the particular exercise, there's no reason for your muscles to get bigger and stronger in order to be able to adapt. And when I talk about changing exercises all the time, I always get the question, well, what about progression? And the answer is, what about progression? I don't care about progression. You will get stronger naturally, organically, if you're training at optimal intensity and changing exercises. And I'm not a power lifter. I couldn't care less how much I can curl. I couldn't care less what the numbers are. All I care about as a natural bodybuilder is increasing the size of my biceps. And I think the obsession with numbers doesn't really make that much sense in that if you think about a power lift, for example, they can lift some really heavy weights, but their muscles don't look the same and have the same development as a bodybuilder. As a bodybuilder, the numbers are, yes, important. You want to get stronger, but it's not the be all and end all. Be all and end all is the intensity and making sure you're always doing what's uncomfortable. It's almost completely counterintuitive, which leads to my next tip for getting bigger biceps, which is you cannot do perfect full range of motion repetitions all the way through your sets. It is impossible, completely impossible to do some nice, beautiful bicep curls all the way up, all the way down, nice and controlled, and think that you will ever hit your potential in terms of your arm size as a natural athlete. It's not going to happen. I am really tired of watching all the guys who are on drugs doing their nice controlled contractions and talking about full range of motion and not telling the public that number one, they can't train all out intensity because they're probably gonna rip the tendons. Using steroids makes your tendons such that you're more likely to get a rip and a tear and they have to be very careful. And number two as well, they don't have to. They don't have to push it. If you're a natural athlete and you're not training at or near your <clears throat> limits, you are not gonna be lifting the kind of weights you need to make your arms really grow. Yes, you will get some results from doing a full range of motion repetitions and perfect reps at the beginning at the end, but it's going to stop. At some point in time, you're going to plateau. I know there are a lot of people out there who take umbrage with the idea of it, but there's one small problem with that. It's called biology and science. This is how our bodies work. Our bodies and our muscles, like I said, again, like a broken record, respond to stimulation it's not accustomed to. If your first rep is exactly the same and exactly as perfect as your last rep, it means your body's already adapted. You're not gonna get much in the way of growth and you are not going to realize the potential. The other important tip with a natural bodybuilder is to understand that because we can't magically grow our arms to 21 inches, we have to do everything possible to develop our bicep muscles as much as possible. That being said, the brachialis, the muscle going along the side of the arm is an important muscle that you have to develop if you ever want to have maximum impressive arm development. Hammer curls in every shape and form have always been the cornerstone of my arm training because not only the development of that particular muscle help increase the overall size of your bicep, it also creates an extra line that gives the illusion of your arms being a lot bigger than they actually are. And the great thing about hammer curl type exercise is that you can use a lot of weight. Focus. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to go heavy on it. Like and you have to really go all out. So you have to always push it. And as far as injury is concerned, don't be worried too much about that. Everything if you're else. constantly changing your exercises, you should be okay because you're only doing this sporadically and you're always varying your exercises. I've been training this video now for the past 33 years without any injuries whatsoever. And I've also trained hundreds of people. So trust me, high intensity does not increase your potential for injury if you're constantly varying your exercises. Don't just do hammer curls, but make sure you have hammer curls as an ongoing presence in your arm training routines. And while this is a biceps video, I would be remiss if I didn't point out the importance of also training your triceps as it makes up two thirds of your upper arm mass. So this is a lot of information to take in, and I hope these tips help you with your biceps training as much as it helped me and the people I've worked with over the years. Thanks again so much for tuning in, and as always, Excelsior.